Welcome back to another episode of The Way In. Before we get started, please make sure that you're subscribed to our YouTube channel with the notifications on so you do not miss a single piece of content that we post here on the Minnesota Made Outdoors YouTube channel. Without further ado, roll that intro. Welcome to the world of competitive ice fishing. Anglers from the Ultimate Panfish League and Minnesota Made Outdoors take to the hard water to test their angling skills against some of the best on ice. This is the way in. Minnesota Made Outdoors presents The Way In, brought to you by Dan Rawlings Real Estate. Also brought to you by Thunderstruck Exteriors. Welcome back for episode number five of The Way In. I am Tony Dahlberg, your host, The Real Tone D, and this is the last episode of the 2021 ice fishing season. That doesn't mean we're going to stop with the content, but this is the last episode of the weigh-in and it is set up a little different. Obviously no tournaments have happened, so there won't be any um, interviews with champions, but this time we got a chance to sit down with the brains behind the UPL in Matt Johnson and the guys behind Minnesota Made uh, in Paul Gazzoni and Jay Kuchenmeister. Uh, we sat down, talked with them about the history of both leagues, uh, why and how things started, and kind of what, what we can look forward to in the future. There's a lot of good information in this one, so strap in uh, and just enjoy this discussion. All right, so we were just talking off camera. Um, UPL is in its 19th season, going into your 20th season. Can you give us, Matt, a little bit of a uh, kind of summary of where it all started and then kind of what got us to today absolutely well it's funny because when when i started doing tournaments i fished this league called the let's it's gone now but the premise was you bring in a limit of bass pike walleyes crappies bluegills two person team two weigh-ins a day because you fill your lie well mm -hmm. well after the second event me and my partner realized you know we'd go like to cast lake or we'd go to la hominy mm -hmm. chain we were not experts on these bodies of water. And these locals were kicking our butts, finding the bass, finding the walleye. So my partner and I said, we're gonna chase panfish. Like the dumbest fish in the lake, in theory, right? Mm -hmm. We've all fished turned on bass. So that's, but... Well, that, yeah. <laughs> I agree that bass are the dumbest fish in the lake. <laughs> but to us, the panfish were, and we're thinking, well, we can keep 10 crappies and 20 gills. That's our weight. If we can get 10 crappies and 20 gills at all these tournaments when everyone else is chasing walleye, spike, and bass, we're gonna do well. So, so total weight. Total weight combined. Okay. So, and we're fishing bodies of water like cast, mm. whitefish chain, where so the panfish are yeah. big. Yep. So we started winning these tournaments, bringing in 10 crappies and 20 bluegills and nothing else in our basket. <laughs> and these guys were bringing in six walleyes, three bass and a pike. And we're like, oh, 27 pounds for 30 panfish. And so after one year of this happening, they made a, a rule in the off season that we're gonna limit the amount of panfish to five and 10. And we're like, oh, wait a second. Like, mm -hmm. we didn't break any rules. You got your roommate. Like, but, that, roommate yeah, after you. but that was our That's that awesome. was our plan. Like, we can't compete against these yeah. seven local guides on cast. Yeah. So when that happened, I was like, well, this is stupid. We like to fish panfish. I'm starting a panfish only league. Right. And that's what birthed the UPL. And it was 10 events a year, four ice fishing, and six open water at the time. Okay. No November, no April. Transition seasons, we right. figured you don't know what to expect. Uh, we did the year round thing open water and ice for two years and realized no one wants to fish panfish in a boat, let alone competitively. Mm. Like who can, ca you catch it with corn in a bottom. So like we went just to just ice fishing yep. and it just blossomed. I mean, when we started the league, the only thing that existed was the trap attacks. Mm -hmm. There was nothing else out there. And and the trap attacks was the, you know, you heard about them, you travel around the country, followed it, but none of our guys wanted to do that. Mm -hmm. And. Um, it's really what blossomed into the UPL now, the same premise. And I think it's the reason why our leagues are successful is these guys and gals don't want to drive around the country. They have, you know, lives and families and stuff, but they want to compete. They want to learn. They want to challenge themselves and they want to have fun. Uh, so that's what, that's what birthed the UPL. And it started with 15 teams on Linwood Lake and we allowed trucks 
in vehicles, it was a mess. Mm -hmm. And some guys walked out and every year just got better and grew and more interest. And we started with five perch, five bluegills, five crappies. And when the perch were falling through the milk crate for weigh-in, <laughs> we stopped doing perch. And we had a, you got a bonus point if you weighed 15. So guys like Michael Thompson would bring in, we didn't have minimums back then, uh, would bring in perch that big sure. just to get a bonus point. And then after about two years of that, we said, perch are gone, there's a minimum length. Sure. It's the seven and seven and eight, like we know it now. Yeah. And it's been that way probably for the last 16 years. I think there's some people who would love to see perch added back, <laughs> yeah. you know, just for uh, at certain lakes too. I oh, yeah, we definitely pretty solid, right? For, yeah. This year. Tatanka, we had guys bringing some perch just to have fun, and there was legit 12 inch, 13 yeah. inch perch that were yeah. one pounders that guys were like, We're eating these. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. So sure. we've heard that too. Bring perch back for certain events. Right. It's like, Wow, now you totally changed the way you attack the lake. Yeah. But it would be yeah. fun. Be fun. Yeah. So that's kind of how it started, and it's been fun ever since I was in college. I was 18, 19 when I decided to do the UPL and I had people right at the bat saying like, you know, how you're on fishing league, you're in college full time, you're playing sports. And I just said, well, you don't know how obsessed I am about this right. sport of fishing. <laughs> That's the key. And uh, Facebook didn't exist. None of that existed. Uh, we got all of our information and push off of forums, which is a dead art right now. No one, they don't even exist. And uh, I used to actually hang flyers at Gander Mountains and Thorn Brothers and say, you want to fish in the UPL? Cool. Yeah, that was awesome. So forums still exist. I found a lot of information on cats. Sure. <laughs> from the, from yeah. 28. They're, yeah. they're from 2015, yeah. 16, yeah. but guess what? Yeah. But from like 2000 <laughs> to 2009, forums yeah. were everything. Yeah. Like yeah. that's, I worked for one, like it was a big deal. That's like when I, people were sharing it. That was yeah. fishingminnesota.com was where all the guys yeah. were. That's where if you were anybody in fishing, you were on the forums. And then uh, it took Facebook about well, three years of really getting going to where you saw that forum just go decline. Yeah, once you can create a group in yeah. Facebook, hey, it took a couple of years, I think. And mobile friendly. Forums are not mobile friendly right. to this day. Yeah, and I would say about 2012, 2013, that was the end of forums. Right. And now it's like, they don't even exist, so. Yeah. So, so at what at what point did you get Thane to, to come on as, as your confidant? So Thane, I, I met Thane, I hired Thane actually at Thorn Brothers. So yeah. there was a short period of time where I was the customer service manager. Yeah. Our customer service manager, uh, Carrie, who was there forever, decided to move on, semi-retire. I stepped in and we had to hire some more help and I hired Thane. And instantly, anyone that's, that has met Thane, anyone out there watching knows, like he's the most likable human being this yeah, planet's ever created. Yeah, pretty nice element. Uh, yeah. Great guy. And and as we got to know each other at Clam, I think he just came out to an event one time yeah. to do some fishing and have some fun. And it's like, hey man, you help me with the weigh-in. <laughs> sure. I, and then it turned into like, Then you, you can know, get rid of him? Well, then, it's, yeah. then, it's then, like, then, you, then you start, you get the uh -huh. brains working inside Thane Jensen's head and you don't know what's coming out. And we decided to do these live videos and go live on Facebook during the way and walk around and interview the teams and do all that. And oh, man, the guy's awesome. Mm -hmm. okay. And, and he's yeah. likable and he's really professional. He's goofy and yeah. you know he knows just enough about fishing. I love you, Thane. He knows <laughs> just enough about fishing to be dangerous. Not an expert and he would admit that, but I'll tell you what, the guy can catch fish. He doesn't do much fishing because as you guys see running the okay. ones, yeah. it's work. Yeah. Uh, but I'll tell you what, there's no one else I'd rather have in a corner when it's like, dude, go be goofy and talk to people. Right. right. Dude's dial. Yeah. Not to mention being able just to make decisions and bounce ideas off. Absolutely. Of yeah. Very bright, has every everything best interest. He's probably the one of the one of the more selfless people I've met. It's it's never about Thane Jensen. It's always about everything else and everyone else going on. Yeah. And uh that's why he's the head of customer service. Yeah. Should be celebrated, man. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. There'll be a statue of Thane someplace, maybe Tijuana, <laughs> someplace in the world at some point, there'll be a statue of Thane Jensen. I'm 100% convinced he deserves a statue. So with you mentioning that, like you introduced kind of the live aspect to these tournaments with Thane going out there interviewing people and, you know, Minnesota Made has kind of adopted some of that stuff as we've always kind of referred to ourselves as the little brother of, of UPL at this point. The JV. The JV. Or he's older than so, me. Right. <laughs> I've always looked up to Gazzoni. That doesn't mean you so, can't pass me. Yeah. So with that being said, I guess Jake and Paul, can you guys give us kind of a similar rundown of what brought Minnesota to us and or Minnesota Made, sorry, to, to the ice fishing leagues? I'll, I'll start. You can kind of work off me. Actually, Matt and I kind of reconnected 
uh, after, uh, essentially when I graduated college and uh, I actually met him back at Thorn Brothers when you were working behind the counter one day and you handed me a card and that card had your face on it and two giant bluegills like this. <laughs> and uh, Photoshop. Yep. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> they had that back in 2009? <laughs> um, and, and kind of flash forward, probably about another year later, Jake and I were at a buddy's chief, our buddy chief's wedding. And we were talking about buying new ice suits and trying to get into the UPL. And so we reached out to Matt and he was like, Hey man, we got a waiting list. You can put your name on it. It's uh, you know, X amount of people deep. And uh, Jake kind of looked at me and was like, you know, Matt Matt from Clam, Matt Johnson. I was like, yeah, kind of go way back and uh, friends with your older brother Mm -hmm. from, uh, from high school. And so Jake was like, well, we should try to do our own thing. Um, and Jake essentially kind of took the reins and um, at the time was kind of working with a bunch of guys who were into fishing and we had some mutual friends who wanted to get out and, and learn and we adopted kind of a multi-species uh, approach and so it was not, not just panfish, it was we had bonus uh, points for pike and walleyes. Unfortunately not bass because every every bass we yeah. had was a 20 inch bass. Yeah, you know? them. Of so course, yeah, 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 no of course. Bass. I mean that's what we do. We eat bass. <laughs> They're delicious, especially out of cold water. Oh yeah, fresh. Oh, well, beautiful. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and so that's kind of how it started. We, were, we started as a multi-species league and we learned pretty quickly that guys did not want to tote around shiners or sucker minnows. <laughs> um, yeah, some, people did. <laughs> some guys would sit back and watch tip ups. Oh yeah. You know, and this was when, you know, we didn't have like rules. These guys are drinking you know, six or eight beers out yeah. there. Out in their truck. truck. In, tra- in their truck. truck. And Jake and I <laughs> are looking for a multi species spot. You know, we're working with a 10 inch jiffy and uh, <laughs> I'm kind of drill holes of that thing. Yeah. And we we just kind of found out that you, the UPL had a dial, I think, um, as far as the, the format went. And we uh, looked at the quality of their anglers and saw, um, you know, these guys having great success and just the competitive nature, I think, that it that uh, it creates, not to mention, you know, if you're just getting into the sport of ice fishing, panfish is a great place, it's a great place to start. And so at the time we were kind of just getting into it, at least I was. And, uh, you know, chasing panfish is kind of where you start. So that was when we dropped the bonus pike and bonus walleye, um, (laughs) that uh, maybe we lost a couple tournaments because of that. (laughs) We did. Uh, But, you know, that's, it was, we just kind of, adopted a very similar uh, rule base, uh, just like the UPL, and it's been, you know, kind of, that's how we create the UPL Junior. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think, I mean, we, we literally had pieces of paper that we'd hand the guys, and you're outside, and it's cold, and it's like, they're, they come in, and they're like half, like the ink's running on them, <laughs> and they're like tearing, and it's like, it was it was an awful format. It was all it, catch and release. It worked. Yeah, it was all. It, that was the only plus side of it. It was catch and release. It just wasn't feasible to do it. Like mm-hmm. it's just not. Not to mention, like you know, we got taken a picture and all the school's gone, and we didn't even know anything about. It. We were so naive and dumb <laughs> when it came to fishing back then. But like from from where that started, at, what did we start with eight teams? Probably yeah. and a piece of paper to you know. 30 teams having a scale like and just the knowledge and and I think like what what started as just like a quick like let's have fun with our buddies and it's a small little deal has turned into so many cool relationships within within our group guys going fishing in the summertime fun fishing in the winter in between tournaments and just the amount of friends and and cool stuff that we've been able to do um from from that just saying hey we're gonna start our own league Yep. And now all of a sudden we're sitting here and yep, agreed. And it, doing if it stuff wasn't on YouTube, and if it wasn't for this guy, you know, we wouldn't absolutely we wouldn't have the the just the audience, I think, and the the know how the the notoriety that the clam brings to the ice fishing industry, um, and just the the way that the clam pros do it, the example that they set, how involved they are in you know so many different selfless organizations and the things that I've gotten to just volunteering time to fish with people who don't have the ability or the gear or what have you that that's really I think the special thing that's come with the clam relationship not to mention 
uh, being able to, you know, see a lot of blue on the ice with the 60 members that we've got. And don't sell yourself short. You're one of them clan pros. <laughs> like you're out there doing it. I mean, you know, when, when you first started doing the MMA, like you said, you were getting back into the sport of fishing. Sure. Understanding it now, man, without, um, you know, company up too much, you become one of the good ones on the field <laughs> in any circuit. So that's, yeah. that that's always been, and from my perspective in the UPL is, what I really take pride in is, is obviously the camaraderie and all that stuff, but like watching some of these anglers grow, I've seen anglers come into the UPL, honestly, never having used line letter than six pound test. <laughs> yeah. Not knowing what a spoolie, a spooler reel is, yeah. or a spring bobber or finesse fishing or ever using plastics. Right. To fast forward five, maybe 10 or 15 years later, whenever they started to where it's like, these guys are competing nationally. I mean, Michael Thompson fished for Team USA, Lords Luma fished for Team USA. I mean, you look at some of these guys and it's like, when they first started, it was like Carhartts, a thing of maggots and a bobber. <laughs> And it's and, and we all start someplace, right? And mm -hmm. that's some of the most fun I think is to watch some of these English progress and you know, first tournament ever. Hey, you know, twenty seventh place ain't that bad. You didn't come in last, you know, right. keep going to like and, five years later. Team, team of the year, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Team of the year five years later, like a Matt Milbrandt type, you know, enter the UPL. Yeah, brand always, new at it. We always talk about like cool. a two to three year. If you're if you're into fishing. It's, and you're you're coming into the league, I would plan on two to three years and, and get your pen and paper ready because the guys in the league and the gals in the league, will they'll share. And you'll learn more just by signing up for this league than you would going to all these seminars and, right. and guided trips and whatever. Still book a guide though. <laughs> Still book guides. <laughs> Definitely. But no, you're 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 100 true. I mean, I, we said the same thing. Like, and what we always tell any new member or new team to the UPL is, you know, this is not your time to be shy. Like, the, yeah. you're in this league and you have an opportunity, right? And, and it's never meant for any of us to be boastful. It's just like, talk to the members around you. When you're on the ice, don't be afraid. If you're struggling, it's not a pride thing. You know, we all have days we don't catch fish. I don't care who you are. Ask them how they're catching their fish, what's working, what's not working. Uh, because what we, what I love is that the members, just like they do at MMA, will will help you. Mm -hmm. They'll te even tournament day. They'll be like, mm -hmm. "You're you're bombing, dude. Mm -hmm. Slide this way. Yeah. Get or, off the brake line. You're off too shallow. Use this know. downsize, upsize, right. whatever it might be. Or right. your heater blew up. Here you go. <laughs> that's, <laughs> happened, that's happened to me more than once. Yeah. 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 Or, or Oregon Trail of machines. You know, <laughs> yeah. out and, and, uh. and we're going to check on teams, and it's like. Dead quad, dead <laughs> yeah. machine, yeah. dead quad. Where, where, what the heck? And it's just people walking everywhere like, yeah. like, like World War Z. Yeah, <laughs> yeah like, so on that point then, so I was wanting to ask you guys, what's the biggest thing that you guys are noticing in terms of advancement with, with fishing and with these leagues? Is it more that people are changing their techniques into stuff like tight lining and using the schoolies or is it the electronics and the gear and the their, setups that they're putting on their quads and, and UTVs. What, what are you guys seeing as like the biggest change that's helping people at this point in time? I think it's all of the above. I mean, if you watch, everybody's getting so much more efficient. They're, they're rigging out their quads or their sleds to be where they can just jump off to a hold, boom, they can move to the next spot. It's, you know, they, they condense that time of packing up and pulling stuff out. And then you watch teams too, and they evolve at different rates. Some guys are, you know, like you look at Dale, he wants to tight line. Now all of a sudden you can't get him away from tight lining because he says that that's dialed in. Some other guys say, no, I'm gonna do it my way. You watch Evan, he uses the same jig for five years. And mm -hmm. If it doesn't get bitten off, it doesn't come off. And mm -hmm. Leif is, or Smashing. Nick's using $15 rods with $10 reels. And with the same spring bobber you said for 30 Yeah, years. I mean, so everybody's <laughs> different, but everybody evolves, I think, and learns at their own pace. And some guys just learn or want to learn a lot quicker and I think like between those two things the the competition and the, the quality of fishermen are insane. I think you hit it on the head when you said efficiency. I think that, that you you learn really quick how to be efficient but the only way to learn is by not being efficient right? and going oh man I just wasted you know 
15 minutes doing this when I'm strapping all my gear back on my wheeler. That could be 15 minutes could make yeah. a day. Yeah. You know, and so it's, I think, uh, I don't know if it's the technology um, more than it is just the kind of the want and the drive that, that you see these guys have in wanting to do well, wanting to catch fish and prove themselves that they can be competitive. And so, uh, yes, technology has definitely played a role and, uh, the evolution of the, uh, the spooler reels and the one-to-one -one and reducing line twists and tungsten and lead and live bait and plastic, all that stuff comes into play, but you can have the best stuff and if you're inefficient, mm -hmm. forget about it. Yeah. yeah, I would say yeah, effort. It's always comes down to effort. Like the tools are great, but we've all seen many, many anglers do it without the tools. And I think what I see as most anglers in, in these leagues you watch them progress and why they get better as anglers is, is effort. They realize you have to put effort in. Like if you ask most of these anglers that start in any of these leagues prior to this, they're usually going to tell you, I did not. they think they're good fishermen. And it's this is no knock on anybody, but they think they're great anglers. They got their hot spots. They go and flip their traps. They catch their fish. The sun goes down. They catch their crappies. They come home. They got their picture on social media. Well, then they come out to an environment where you're forced to do something you might not want to do. Fish a lake you don't want to fish. In a time you don't want to fish. So if your mindset is, I'm gonna go out to a spot that looks productive or a community spot, flip my flip my trap and sit, you're gonna struggle. If you're not putting that effort in. I mean, we have one team, Ben and Colby. <laughs> I've never seen this in my entire life, ever, ever. They sprint from hole to hole, all tournament long. They they get up when if they have if they have seven holes in, in Polly's living room here, they go from hole they run to the next hole. It's they don't walk they run. They've driven away multiple times with their panoptics in the water and it comes flying out of the ice on their quad. Yeah, that's how they all dial. And if you watch the guys in the league, it's <laughs> it's a fast paced game. Now I'm not saying that's what every angler needs to do to be successful, right. but if you take a play out of their playbook. They're moving. And I always use this analogy, like if you fish in the summer in a boat, you're never pulling your boat up to a dock, dropping a, an anchor and fishing that for five hours straight, making the exact same cast sure. over and over and over and over and over again. If you are, great. That's rare. No, you're working a weed line. And after you work a weed line or a dock line, you go, you know what, I'm going to try that dock line. We need to use that simple approach in ice fishing more and it makes the world a difference. So the tools are great. The tools help us do the job easier, but it's like sports. Mm -hmm. You can't coach effort. You can't coach mental toughness. Right. It's not something you can coach. It's something to where you just kind of grow and build on. And it's funny to watch some of these guys after one season, they go, oh, wow, I did not know that this yeah. is what it takes and then you learn and you adapt and you go I i'm going to tell you right now like if i joined the upl they haven't made you gotta kick my butt because i my mentality has changed i'm a fishing guy i got my milk run i got my 10 spots on the lakes i want to fish and i'm going to fish them i'll put fish in a basket but if i had to go to that lake and it's brutally cold it's gross no couch like tonka no, no, you guys like, should fish like to like to tonka, to tonka this last year when it was 27 below we started and every team's like you guys good to go? Are you good to go? Are you good to go? Oh, he can't talk. He's yeah, fired up. <laughs> go. And then I dip into the I yeah, yeah. Yep. I don't have to be under on this. We had a house run to the rush that, that day and we went back yeah. into bed. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's crazy. So it's uh it's good. I mean, I'm telling you, like I, the anglers that fish in these leagues as we're like I said, we're prideful. They're some of the best fishermen and, and women I think that exist in this ice fishing world right now. Absolutely. Another example of that is, I think we we're fishing down uh, on the southern lake. I won't say it, Nazaska. Wait, <laughs> <laughs> You're uh, it's protected. Now. It's a joke. It's protected now, but uh, Dude. yeah, it is protected. But um, that's where you caught your pike in that tournament. Yeah. Okay. No. <laughs> no white bass. Oh yeah. Yeah. No. But we're sitting there actually fishing for white bass and largemouth at the time. And we got probably half the league sitting over there, and we have a couple of beers, and we're all, it's kind of wrapped Saturday. up. Saturday. It's Saturday. Day before Christmas, yeah. yeah. And Beautiful we're all, day. We're all, yeah, it was like 30 degrees, maybe 40, and we're hanging out, and there's one four-wheeler running around the lake, just drilling holes, drilling holes, drilling holes. 
Who is it? Leaf and Miller. Nick Miller. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> Leaf and Miller. Yeah. And he looked over. Yeah, he did. He looked over a couple did times. Did he wave though? No, he just. Oh, they're hanging out. I'm gonna he keep. He was probably keep watching. Fishing. Probably found fish and was seeing if anybody saw. <laughs> no, we were probably sitting on near one of his spots. Yeah. What was happening? And he was looking to see if we were actually fishing. But, but I mean, that's him. Like yeah. he's so just driven. Like that's yeah. the mentality. Yeah. But like, yeah, it's. It's fun, and, and we have anglers in our league that that's not what they want to do. Right. Like if they don't cash a check, that's okay. Mm -hmm. Like they're perfectly fine Same. going, hey, I, and it's usually two reasons. One, they're like, I'm not doing that. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'm not putting my body through that. And yeah. two, they're like, I just want to learn. Uh -huh. Like I'm learning from people. Like we have, we have, I'm not going to mention names out of respect, but we have teams that consistently finish 25 to 30 yeah. and have come back for year after year after right. year because they have a lot of fun. They enjoy it. They're a part of something. They can they pre-fish a ton, and uh, and just go out and have a good time. So that kind of that kind of answers my second or my next question here is um, with like you're talking about these guys are progressing so much and kind of the elite fishermen in these leagues. Um, but there's wait lists. Like I think both leagues have a wait list at this point. But are you are either leagues struggling right now with turnover where you're trying to make sure you get those 30 teams in and is that an issue right now or you're you're pretty stacked now i would say we're pretty good i mean we most what we've experienced the last like three years hasn't been so much like open spots it's one member has a baby right mm -hmm. my wife just had a baby i gotta buy out next year so right. that person finds a new partner you know so like we haven't really dipped that heavy into the waiting list maybe i think the most in the last three years was like maybe three spots and, and I'm very respectful of the waiting list. Some people have been on there for a while and I just call down and see who's next and it's great. Some people I know, some I don't know, never met them before. Mm -hmm. uh, but I would say between both our things, it's probably safe to say we're gonna fill out 30. Yeah. I mean, we've talked about going to 35 this year because you know <clears throat> there's a lot of diversity happening in our league with teams splitting, one member retiring, teams teaming up. And I always really wanna make sure that if you've been in the league for a while, you still have a spot. But if we limit it to 30 teams, and let's say seven teams go want to split, just do the math. Mm -hmm. You can't get by with 30 teams. So there's a there's a chance we may go to 35 this year, which I'm not 100% in favor of. The only reason I'd go to 35 is to accommodate so that if you've been in the league, you can keep fishing the league. Some of those accesses yeah. start getting really yeah. tight when you add another five to yeah. 10 trucks right. and trailers. We're not well. adding five more teams just to add five more teams. It would yeah. be because we split and you split, and I don't want to leave two league members from yeah. the last four years sure. out. Yeah, sure. That would be the only reason we would ever add. And that's why we went from 25 to 30 10 years back was we had a similar situation. So I'm going to hammer them down. We have a meeting here in a couple of weeks. I'm going to say, figure it out. We want to stay at 30. Yeah. You know, if, if maybe you two need to no, get along. We won't go there. We're behind we're again. Yeah, no, yeah, we're, not we're, going we're not going to 35 this year. Yeah. Yeah. I would say but we do I have think some, some turnover. Yeah, we Every last year. year we had eight, eight teams. That was a lot. Yeah, it was big number. Um, but now many years like that. Now we have you know all these teams that are that used to fish some five years ago, four years ago, whatever it was, some two years ago that want back in. You know, life happens. Stuff happens. Buying a new house. You know, especially this year, the COVID oh, stuff yeah. and mm -hmm. and uh, like kids schedules getting condensed like I know like Dylan had the wrestling schedule condensed just into January February but like there's <laughs> there's just I think we got enough teams that want to get in just to just from previous teams that were in it and that's that's kind of a rule we do have a waiting list but if you were in the league prior you have you go to the top sure. of the waiting list so makes sense I think yeah. it's been good the turnover has been good in a sense that it's gotten more competitive but there's those, there's some teams that you really miss. Yeah. yeah. And you go, man, they just they belong. Yeah. Like, you know, come back here. We they always talk about good anglers, right, fun people, the right teams, and doing it and whatever. Right. And and when you lose like one or two, I think you know last year was you know a few of them, and it was like, man, that sucks. Mm -hmm. I hate losing those kind of people yeah. because when, those are the right people right. that we want to hopefully be around for a long time. Basically, yeah. cherry pick. It doesn't matter where you are in the waiting list. <laughs> we that your social media. <laughs> we Google you. If you look like a douchebag on your Facebook, yeah, yeah. you yeah. broke rule number one. Number you're out. Yeah. So scrub that Facebook. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I would 
we do we do look at who who wants to be a part of it, uh, but respectfully. I mean, we always contact the previous members first and then start on our waiting list. So a good way to do it. We've, we've got people that have been on our waiting list for years and never even respond to us, <laughs> except for oh, put me back on your waiting list. You know, in June of every single year. So, GW. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we had Michael Thompson fish in the league. This was his last year. It was the first year he didn't fish in it. Mm -hmm. He fished in every single year since the beginning. Yeah. It's and, it's, and it's so funny because yeah. we just had a guy ask to join our league mm -hmm. and said that he was going to see if MT would be his partner. I hope he can. <laughs> I, I doubt he will. He, I don't know if he ice fish much at all this last winter, to be honest. I don't think it's going to happen. And, uh, he, found the, go. he found the kayak. <laughs> yeah, he, yeah. He hasn't got out of it. He's no, so he's obsessed with kayak fishing. <laughs> and we tried getting him to come to a handful of events to hang on. He didn't come to one, but he's just so into kayak. It's hard on his body. Yeah, I mean it's tough for him to. He's he, it's Michael Thompson, like he's a legend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. like he is the most legendary ice fisherman probably ever. Right. He would ca is there one in your toilet? He'd go catch it. <laughs> like he's that good. I I would say no, but he probably. Yeah. yeah. No, but there's probably a snake or a gerbil in there. Those things are running around here, yeah. rampant. So, so I have uh, I have one one final question, and we can kind of just yeah, line it up to, to you guys. <laughs> it was it was you missing <laughs> That's a turtle, uh, by the way. I, I got one, one last topic for you guys, and then uh, can kind of just keep the, the session going if you want to, but we're running up on 28 minutes. But uh, so with all that being said, we, we found the history, we've, we've seen the status of the leagues to this point. What's the future for not only the leagues, but also ice fishing tournaments and, and leagues like this? What, what's the future look like? You know, I think it's it's hard to know right now. Paulie and I have talked about this in depth probably, what, twice now in the last month, it feels like. And, uh, you know, panfish are heavily targeted right now in many aspects in Minnesota, not just from a fishing perspective, but from a, from a selective harvest perspective, from the DNR's realm. And I, I wouldn't surprise me if at some point we see our leagues having to go to a, a catch for release type tournament. Now, that would present some challenges. We would get through them. We've been through a lot of challenges in 20 years, you know. Uh, I think that'll be something we might see. I think uh, we need to do our job uh, as, as leagues to continue to preach the selective harvest. Pick up after yourselves. Don't be an idiot at the access. Respect the people on land. Because, you know, it doesn't. It, there's no better feeling than when you get an email after an event and they say, hey, thank you. Like, I think the lake was cleaner after your UPL or MMA left than when you showed up. So... I think that's some things. I think you're gonna see more leagues like ours develop. Uh, I mean, I'm getting asked to start one in Northern Minnesota, Wisconsin, Iowa. I mean, I won't, I got four kids. I, got, I, did, I just I, had a I'm call busy. the other day, some guy in Maine wants to start one. Yeah. Well, MM Maine in Maine would be tough. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. Minnesota He's Maine. on his own. <laughs> but yeah, like, but I, you know, I'm happy to, to, and I know you guys are too, to say, well, here's the foundation of how this works. Here's what we're yeah. doing. Like. I have no problem anyone adopting anything we've done to help. Like, that's why we do this. Like, we do this to grow the sport, to have fun. So I do see that happening. I already caught wind of uh, a league starting in Wisconsin. Uh, they're going to take a similar format to ours. Uh, I know there's a strong conversation about a league in, like, DL right now where they're going to do a similar thing. And that's awesome. That's outstanding. That's great. And, and the more of, of that, like, we've talked about – some of the scrutiny we go under at times, you know, there, there was a term thrown out there, kill leagues. And, you know, Paul and I kind of chuckled at that because we're intimate to it and we understand, like, we're, we're the farthest from a kill league. Like, what we do is actually the exact opposite. Everyone out there watches tournament day and they see that, uh, but they don't see all the other days. Paul put it best, like all the days pre-fishing, you're letting everything go. Or not fishing right. at all. Or, or just or how about the holes. fact that if you let those 60 teams out into the wild, there's no tournament league, exactly. and they're just hammering all these lakes and keeping fish and bringing them to aunts and uncles. Yep, <laughs> and that's the point you made, and it's spot on, and, and I've talked with Jack Baker, and I've seen other people. So I think I think there's a unified front with, with all the leagues on, on like what we want to see accomplished, but you know, I see these leagues continuing to be a platform for anglers to get into the sport. I do think that uh, we've put ourselves at a level, MMA made in UPL, that if you're a, a brand new rookie angler, you're not even gonna try to enter. I think we saw some of that ten, five years ago, 10 years ago. I don't think, if, if you're not willing to do that, 
good an effort. I don't think guys are even trying to get in now because I think they see it and go, I'm just going to donate my money. Yeah, I think you, you have know? to love fishing. Right, it's a different level yeah. of, of of fishing now, and I think we've we've established that, you know. Um, but I would encourage, if, if you're in that mindset, start a league. Mm -hmm. Start one up. you got 20 other buddies, MMA, UPL. It was all founded the same yeah. way. Start another one. You know, there is 1.6 million ice anglers in Minnesota. We could have more than a few leagues. Mm -hmm. yeah. oh, yeah. You know, and, and um, it's not all that yeah. difficult to run it. I mean, even if you wanted to keep it a super like intimate deal, I right. mean, it's not hard. Right. And we feed off each other. We talk about what lakes you're going to, and that's, you know, it's important not to, you know, you want to exploit lakes or overfish them. Uh, so, you know, we communicate on a regular basis, like what lakes are you going to, when are you doing this? And I think that's important. Uh, you know, MN Pan does the same thing. They, I always talk to Ted and Sparky. They're like, hey, here's the lakes we're going to fish and here's what we're going to do. And, and uh, I think that's good to keep the communication process open and, uh, and, and, and have fun with it. Like, don't take it serious. Yeah. I would say that's probably the biggest thing is like, you know, take it serious enough to have fun and be competitive. But if it's your life, yeah. Oh my gosh, man, you gotta figure it out. You have to, I mean, you're, at the end of the day, UPL, you're fishing for 500 bucks, and then maybe you're fishing for 700. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, you're already pre fishing seven days, or 19 days, or 27 days, no, no, or no, whatever no. it is. No, no, no. Have fun with it. Yeah. You, know? Yeah. you know, it's it's good, but the, I think the future of the sport ice fishing is good. It's getting better, and, you know, hopefully we can be a part of it. Yeah, exactly. I think awesome. to combat some of that, that kill league talk and stuff, we've we've kind of already started. I don't know about you guys, if you guys got like just innovations on the back of their wheelers with coolers and, oh, yeah. and, and like separators and aerators in there. And so I think that's going to be something that we're going to push is, you know, try to have a cooler, a little yep. bit more space, a little bit more water. Um, with aerators in there, you know, obviously on the freezing cold days, you're kind of screwed. We've done successful rock live release days yep. at certain on big lakes where more than big fish lakes or fish yeah. have gone back. And yeah. That's yeah. And we'll you're looking at 50% probably we figured of the depends fish on, went back depends on and it was a beautiful day. Yeah. And so, I mean, it's better than nothing, but we're, we're trying, we're doing the right things. And, and there's days too that, you know, the majority of the fish go back. Yep. Um, so mm -hmm. yeah, we weigh them and whatever, but you don't see, you know, maybe we can do a better job of, of putting that on camera too, of, right. of showing the release. Point. Or whatever, but and we've gone and collected fish. You run out of battery. Oh yeah. <laughs> By nine. <laughs> I've gone and collected fish. Like we, <laughs> right? two pounder yeah. that we had you running our record. Yeah, dude. I collected at 9.30 in the morning and put it in the cooler and brought it back to weigh and kept it alive all day. So you could do that stuff. But at the end of the day, I mean, the way I've always looked at it is, you know, we're going to do our best. To, to practice what we preach and talk about releasing these big fish and let them go. Some are gonna die. Are any of our leagues breaking any rules or breaking any laws? Not even close. No. Um, and I've yet to see in 20 years of the EPL, a team bring in one guy, 10 crappies and 20 bluegills and keep them all for a living. Yeah. They bring in their total of 15. That's all that's in their bucket. Right. And they try their best to let them go, and if not, they take them home. Yeah. It's a small amount of fish. Two or three, three extra. Yeah, yeah. you got to eat them right away. So yep. that's that's the deal. So yeah. and I feel good about it. And we've even talked about doing something like with the fish that you know, like um, going to the VFW or the Don't or whatever, and right. having a fish fry for them. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've we've done a lot for like, the hometown heroes stuff. Love that. Hey, we can get some veterans. Like Forty you know, yeah, shoot. <laughs> I think I think you know we started Minnesota Made obviously um, to to mirror the UPL, but we kind of had two goals really. It was one we want to make new friends, and I think we can check that box big time. Um, and two, we want to learn, and I think we can check that box. So we've successfully accomplished both of those goals and then some. And I think it's now morphed even further into we want to create more ambassadors for this sport. Uh, we want to create role models for our kids, for our kids, and the people that are watching us on social media. And now it's become we want to create relationships with military, veterans, active police, retired police, fire, conservation, you know, DNR, whatever it might be. I mean, those are the relationships that we want. Mm -hmm. um, I think we're going to continue to progress towards that. Um, and youth angling, and I know that's something that you guys have. Supported yeah. as well, and we so if, event every year. if you've got a reach, um, it can impact you know those people. Those are the ones we've chosen to partner and uh, and to focus on. Absolutely. So it's not just about catching fish. 
All right, guys. Well, that's all I got. I uh, appreciate your time, and this was good discussion. So uh, that's now all I got. Now it's free for all? Yeah, if you guys want to bullshit some more, <laughs> you got, we're at 37 minutes. <laughs> yeah. I point. got nothing. nothing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, cool. So where are you fishing this weekend? Yeah. Brought to you by Dan Rawlings Real Estate. Also brought to you by Thunderstruck Exteriors. I hope you guys enjoyed that little interview roundtable discussion we had. Um, I learned a ton just sitting there and being a part of it. And I hope you guys got some enjoyment out of it because there was a lot of good, good information. Um, so that's going to wrap it up for the 2021 ice fishing season here at the weigh-in. Um, we won't have any new uh, episodes coming out that I can, I guess, tell you about. Uh, we don't have any planned, I guess is what I'm saying. So uh, for now, the weigh-in will uh, be on hold, but we do have a ton of great, great content coming here for the spring and summer. Uh, working on some of that stuff right now as we speak. So keep your eyes peeled for some announcements coming through our Facebook page um, and uh, all the various social media channels here. Uh, I really, really appreciate everyone tuning in for this season. It was a lot of fun being here and, and recapping all of the events. So We'll be back again next season to do it all over again. And if you guys have any suggestions for the up, uh, upcoming season, anything that you want to see changed, anything you'd like to see us try adding in, um, we will do our best to accommodate. Just drop those down in the comments, shoot us DMs, whatever. Um, we're going to take your guys' input as always. So without further ado, that's going to wrap up the 2021 ice fishing season. Thank you so much for tuning in. I got nothing left to say except for remember rule number one of Minnesota made. Don't be a douchebag. We'll see you guys out there. Thanks. Mm -hmm.